Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. If you are new, welcome. Thank you for stopping by. Make sure you hit that subscribe button to join the Chameleon Squad. So as you can see from the title today, we're going to be talking about length retention and protective styling. So if you have not been seeing the growth results that you want from protective styling, then maybe you are doing a few things wrong that are preventing you from receiving the maximum amount of growth. So I want to share a, a few tips with you guys that I've learned along the way. You guys know that I've been putting these twists in since November of last year, so not even a year yet. And as you can see, I have received so much growth over these past few months um, and I have been seeing success. So it is possible to really grow your hair out long with protective styling. It's just you need to make sure you are doing things correctly and not causing more damage. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to break everything down from before care, during care, and after care. Just to give you some pointers and see maybe where in your routine um, you might be going a little bit in the wrong direction. So first off, before care. So there are a few things that I like to do every time time I start a new protective style and the first thing is deep conditioning of course that's something that you should be doing if your hair is loose um, at least once a week maybe two three times a month um, so I like to go ahead and really deep condition I like to apply heat to this allow it to sit for a long time to really penetrate my strands because I know I'm about to have my hair up and out of the way so I need to make sure that I properly take care of it before I go ahead and get started um, also sometimes I like to do treatments this will kind of push a little bit over the edge the growth process so I like to do either the rice water challenge um, I like to do a protein treatment or my most recent favorite one to really cleanse and like reset my hair is the um, Aztec clay mask so all of these things I like to do to prep my hair before I go ahead and put in twists or any protective style and then um, you want to make sure that you properly wash detangle and if you need to dust your ends before you put in your protective style I like to dust my ends a little bit before um, just because I might be coming out of a protective style and so now it's kind of time to kind of freshen things up and I like to go in with a fresh palette before I go in with my protective style. Also I do want to mention the length of time so I think this is probably one of the biggest things that people aren't doing correctly when it comes to protective styling and it's how long you are keeping it in your hair. So I know not all styles really warrant this but you should be at least minimum keeping it in for a month and a half. Nothing shorter than that. Um, if you could do two three months at a time that is ideal because you really want to grow the hair out you don't want to just get the same amount of growth that you would be getting without um doing a protective style and so like a few weeks a month is just really not enough time to see any growth and it's a lot and it's also more frequently that you are manipulating the hair because if you are doing a new protective style every month, that is just too much manipulation, I feel. I feel like you should really just be letting it sit, letting it do its thing, and then take it out, wear your hair however you want to. I like to wear mine for about two months, then I leave my hair out and curly, then I put it back in for a few more months. So I kind of stretch it out enough to see the growth and not mess with my hair as often. So you really don't want to be changing up your protective styles so frequently. Now, if you are doing a sew-in or something like that, that might be a little harder. I like to stick to styles that I can kind of refresh and um, kind of tame a little bit. So even if it is about two, three months, I know I can wash my hair. I know I can refresh it if I need to. Um, so it's not just sitting in dirt for three months because that's not what we want. I know we've all seen them videos where the girl's like, oh my gosh, I know that has to hurt your scalp. But um, so I'm not judging anyone. If you like sew-ins, they're a great protective styling. Just making sure that you can somehow take care of the hair underneath within that time period during care so i've broken this down with daily weekly and monthly okay so daily you should be applying some kind of 
water and or leave-in and or oil to your hair um i like to you guys know spray water bottle all throughout my hair whether i have my twist in or not i like to go ahead and spray it down i like to use a spray leave-in as well it's really lightweight but i still feel like it moisturizes my hair and i spray it all throughout the bottom not just the top where my hair is but all the way down and like kind of rub it in it keeps the hair nice and smooth as well and then I like to go ahead and apply some kind of oil to my scalp um, there are tons of oils out there you guys do your research on your hair type I don't want to recommend a specific oil um, I am also using the oil from the brand that I work with as well it's back in stock it was sold out and it has 13 essential oils in it so if that is something you are interested in I will leave the link down below um, it's like an overall one use you can use it for your hair your skin your lips uh, your face so um, but yeah so you should be daily applying some kind of moisture to your hair even though it is protected in a way it's still getting dry and it's not getting the proper nutrients that it should when it's out and it's loose so applying that water applying that oil in the leave-in will make sure it's moisturized and healthy and it's not damaged underneath then you want to properly do your nighttime wrap up however you want to do your hair especially with those styles that you cannot refresh um, frequently so with this I can refresh them because they're jumbo but if you have like smaller braids or something like that you really want to get longevity out of your style so you want to make sure you're protecting it at night you're doing your scarf they just want attention so bad they really do <laughs> so um, you want to make sure you are putting on your scarf you have your satin pillowcase everything that you do with your curls and your natural hair you want to do with your protective style as well don't treat it any differently So now weekly, let's go into cleansing. So I like to wash my hair at least once a week with the twist in. And this is where I will touch up my front area. So not the whole head, just maybe around the front. Um, you know, the front hair is getting out of control. So I like to touch that up and I like to cleanse my hair as well. Don't think just because you have a protective style that you cannot wash your hair, you can. So I like to either just do a co-wash or use a cleansing shampoo, um, clarifying like a, what is it called? Like a co-washing kind of shampoo. You don't have to use something that strips your hair. You can use something that's moisturizing and or you could just co-wash as well. But you really want to make sure you are cleansing your scalp um, at least once or twice out of that month with your protective style in. And then monthly, um, this also goes for styles that you can retouch. Monthly, I like to go ahead and do like a reset and retouch the hair. So I just retwisted all of this. I'm coming up on my month mark. I am a little early, but um, I was having a lot of new growth um, within these first couple of weeks. So it was like this thick. I had to go ahead and retouch it. Plus, I was slipping a little bit with wearing my scarf at night. So, but... You know do as i say not as i do but um so yes you want to make sure that you can you know kind of refresh it retwist it if you can if you have full locks or smaller braids that might not be possible but making sure you are just at least washing it moisturizing it daily and protecting it at night that will make sure that your hair stays you know protected and moisturized throughout the duration of your protective style so now let's talk about aftercare because I think, you know, this is probably the section where people kind of mess it up. <laughs> and if you do not take care of your hair after, this is where you're going to see breakage, where you're going to see extra shedding, where you're going to see tangles, knots, um, clumps of hair just piled together. So when you have your hair twisted up, braided up, whatever, um, even if you are washing it, when you take it out, there's going to be this part right up in here where there's a lot of gunk <laughs> and product and dirt and hair and all of this stuff. And it's like matted. I know you guys know in each section, it's like that section of the hair where you cannot get through it. So 
This is what you need to do, okay? First things first, do not prematurely cut your hair. Even if you have really, really long, long, long twists, I do not like just snip. I go all the way at the bottom and I work my way up. This is a process. You don't want to rush it. So don't prematurely cut it. You might be cutting off some of your new growth. Um, you don't know how much hair, you know, how long your hair has gotten underneath. So don't prematurely cut. Then once you have taken out the hair, and now we see those little bits that I was talking about, you want to take some oil on your fingers or some water, um, just moisturize your hands, and you want to slowly start going like this. Separating that clump, separating it, separating it, separating it like that. And you wanna do that to every single one. Um, so, I would really take my time here. This is the crucial part. This is the part that is going to make or break your length, your success within your protective styles. So once you have done that, now it's time to go in with deep conditioner. And yes, I am telling you to put your deep conditioner on your dirty hair. It's okay. Um, this is going to soften the hair. This is going to soften those tangles, loosen up that dirt even more. Because even though you went in with your fingers, that is still not enough and we don't want to go into the shower and start washing and start tangling up that hair and clumping up that hair um, because then it's going to be even harder to release those knots and that's when you might have to cut some parts out. I've seen girls have to cut out some of their hair because it's just way too knotted up and then all of that hard work goes to waste. So you want to deep condition your hair. Let it sit until your hair is silky, honey. Silky like, like Becky, okay? After you've let it sit for a while, here is when you're gonna detangle again. So I like to detangle with my fingers as much as possible before going in with tools because you can feel and have um, a sense of where those knots are and work them out. Knots can be saved. You just have to properly know how to detangle your hair. You want to start pulling down. This is how you want to like get the knot out. You pull down, you separate. You pull down, you separate. Um, so then I like to go ahead and do that with my fingers first. Then I will go in with a wide tooth comb or something like that right before I get in the shower. And you should notice that you have very significant like a smaller amount of shed hair will be a lot smaller doing it this way so don't let the the shed hair fool you or, or scare you your hair has been up for like three months two three months so it's going to be a lot but you don't want it to be overly excessive so this is going to allow you to just have the amount that needs to come out come out um, after that, I like to do a three-step method. I like to condition, then shampoo, and then condition. I don't like to go in right with shampoo um, still because I'm just being extra cautious of, um, you know, just tangles and knots and all of that stuff. So I like to, again, smooth in something that's going to give my hair some moisture. Don't I don't let it sit for too long. I just put it in, kind of run my fingers through. Then once I feel like there are no more tangles, I go in and shampoo it and then I condition and rinse it out. And then after that, you can proceed with however you're gonna style your hair. Um, if you're gonna you know, wear it curly, put in your products. If you're not, if you're gonna blow dry it out, blow dry it here, make sure you put in your leave-in and your heat protectant. Um, and this is also a good time if you feel like you wanna dust your ends a little bit, you can. But yeah, so the aftercare, guys, is really, really what's gonna be important. You don't want all of that growth to break off because you're always gonna have growth up here. But to see length, is a true testament to how healthy your ends are. So always remember that. So you really want to take care of your hair after you are taking these styles out. Um, I think I have a video on how I, you know, take out my hair. I don't know. I think I had like a refresh one, but I don't think I had like a. Oh, I think I do. I don't know, but I could do it again if I if I don't. Um, so let me know if you guys would like to see a more in-depth because I am going to leave these in a bit longer than normal this time around. Um, I'm only, like I said, at the month mark and I have refreshed it twice already. So I hope this video was really helpful. I hope this video allows you to see the length goals that you have been looking for and be a little bit more open-minded and less um, intimidated by um, protective styling. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in my next video. Peace.